Many teachers love that shortened class period. Um, they've lived that all their lives, so they understand it. But what's nice about the modified block schedule is that gives me one day each week when I can do extended projects, when I can do presentations. The committee uh, that I was on looked at a lot of um, different schedules and the modified seemed like the best of both worlds. There are advantages to the standard six, seven period day schedule and advantages to the block and we were trying to find a way to meld the two together. Then we started looking at schools with other schedules. Some schools around town were doing the, the four block or the eight block and as a faculty we across the board that didn't appeal to us, either one of those, the four or the eight. So after about four years of teaching here, a fifth year of, of looking at other schools, and then we adopted one, the modified block, the sixth, we just made up our own. They were just implementing that modified block schedule, uh, which was interesting at that time because I didn't have any previous knowledge of it, and I thought it, um, it would be interesting. Block was new to me, so I had to wrap my uh, brain around how to do it. Um, could I do that with a level one class and how was that going to look? I had taught 12 years in normal 45 minute periods and when I moved to this district we were already into the modified block schedule. Um, I was excited about it. I was a little bit intimidated by planning for a block schedule because I um, wanted to make sure that I had enough to fill 90 minutes. So when you've got 50 minutes, um, you know, I, you, you, you kind of you get into a routine, you get into a rhythm as far as how that's going to work, but 90 minutes seems like a lot of time, and what I found I was doing is I was over planning. Uh, we would get through our 90 minute block day, and I had still had, you know, all of these things that I wanted to cover still. Uh, I moved from the block four to the modified, so the days where there were seven classes, that was an adjustment because I was only used to teaching three and six felt like an eternity there for a, for, for a moment, but adjusted pretty quick. I would say the only adjustment period was just trying to manage the 90 minute um, period of time. Um, just trying to figure out what works best and um, it's different for each class. So trying to figure that out for each one. There's a adapting period to it. Um, there's a positive for every subject I can think of. There's negatives too. Um, but it allows us to have that collaboration time, which is a huge positive. It benefits teachers directly, which then in turn benefits the kids in the program. For me, I looked at that hour and a half time period, I looked at it as a day rather than two days. And so I really had to keep in mind that I had to get through two days worth of material, um, whatever that might be. Um, also, you had to keep the kids engaged, so that might mean you have to break it up a little more than you would in a 45 minute period um, for the kids. So allowed us, um, allowed me to be a lot more creative. I don't think there was a, a severe adjustment period. It, it transitioned pretty smooth when I came over from the middle school to the high school and, and I was able to use it how the other health teachers at that time were using it for guest speakers, for uh, extended test days, for other pr purposes like that. What could have strung out into two or three days of performance, a block day is a good lump day of, of a typical, you know, a couple days to introduce it, a day to workshop it, and then a day to actually perform it, and, and nearly a day to review what just happened then, which, which I felt was the same for lab classes or some of my English classes at that point in time. It wasn't an adjustment for me. I think for many people it can be, but if they just try to remember, it's almost like two days put into one and they can build in for themselves natural breaks. I like the 90 minutes because I have an extended time in French with my students and it gives them a little bit longer exposure. I can go in depth in reading and writing and listening and watching videos, a little bit maybe longer video than I would show in a 50 minute um, class period. In my English class, um, there are times when we are discussing uh, a piece of writing, there are times when we are, um, uh, students are, are uh, revising work, they are peer editing other people's work and things like that. Um, so for a block day, a block schedule, um, that day is great for 
uh, a peer editing activity because um, I usually have uh, a list of questions that I want students to consider when they're reading somebody else's work and responding appropriately. So it takes them a while to read through another person's draft. Well, as a science teacher, those are lab days, so it's perfect for that. So we'll spend the Monday and Tuesday and uh, the Friday as a regular lecture, kind of going over stuff, and then we'll use our block days as a lab day. Also, some of our block days we will use as a uh, extended testing period. So, like for example, when we have a genetics test that takes more time, we can use it during that day, but almost always it's used for a block or activity time. Very beneficial once a week. Um, I often do role plays or debates, um, small group activities, connections, time period to, um, and certainly essays. Um, the AP exam, some of the essays would be not possible in a regular 50 minute, so we have a chance to practice. Well, in my choir classes, it's uh, really beneficial because it gives us an extra, like, extended amount of time to rehearse. Um, oftentimes, I break that up into uh, sectional rehearsal where individuals, soprano, alto, tenor, bass, will rehearse on their own and then we'll do group rehearsal. Um, the other thing that I do is bring in um, vocal coaches and dance teachers during that time. Um, so it's a nice longer period to have someone come in and work with the students. Uh, a 90 minute period does allow me to, uh, if you look at one end of it from assessment standpoint, I can give test questions that are more complex, that have a thinking time needed to be successful. Whereas in the 45-50 minute period, by the time you hand it out and collect it all, it's really rather a short testing experience. So it's more comparable um, to what they might experience at college. I teach English, and so I'm sure there's a lot of English teachers that this scares, you know, how can we read for 90 minutes or how can we do English things? It benefits me greatly. Um, so let's say we're studying a particular novel. So in the very beginning of class when we come in, we might do a journal entry. The journal entry might take 10 to 15 minutes. Then we have a natural break. Then after that, we may discuss the novel. And one thing I do that helps with block periods too is we move positions. So I know this is a shock to some high school teachers, but we move to the floor. We call it kindergarten carpet time. So we go from journaling at our tables and then we go to the floor. And then in the next 15 minutes, we might move to partners or we might move around the room. So I think even moving physically in a block period helps with an English classroom. With AP classes, um, these kids are gonna have to go in and possibly take a three hour long test. So um, sometimes I will design a test for an hour and a half and have them go through that. That's, that's half of the time in the AP exam, so it's kind of a good opportunity for that. Also, um, with the AP classes, you do have that extended block, which is great for those labs that do take longer. I like it uh, in the health class because we're able to bring in guest speakers from outside in the community, um, the experts in the area that we're trying to get across to the students, and they do a great job coming in and speaking. The students are more receptive to them for 90 minutes on a block day than if, you know, if I were to stand up and lecture in front of them for 90 minutes. Well, if you've ever taught in a block four or block eight situation, or you've taught summer school where you have pretty much six to five hours that you gotta fill during the day, you chunk it up. So on our block days, it's essentially pretty close to an hour and a half. So you could do it as 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, or half hour, half hour, half hour. And so there you would have three little blocks if you used a half hour, and you'd have like four if you used the 20 minutes. What we learned early on is you can't lecture all period. You can't do a, a, the same activity all period. I mean, you have to learn in a, in a seven period typical day, you know, you're introducing the unit on Monday and maybe Tuesday you're, you do the homework or you review the homework that you gave and try and finalize it and, and, and so on throughout the week. And with a, with a 90 minute period, once a week or twice a week, depending, it becomes you, you had to break it down into three or four different concepts. I think you definitely have to be willing to mix it up. You can't do the same thing for 90 straight minutes. You're not gonna test for 90 minutes. Hopefully you're not gonna lecture for 90 minutes because the kids, they need, the students need you know, to mix it up too. They need to get up and move around the classroom during that 90 minutes. I, I think um, breaking up into sections is really beneficial. So having 
like 20 to 30 minute sections of either an activity or you know uh, group work or individual work um, or uh, lecture time whatever it is you're going to be doing I think that's essential whether it's a choir class or whether it's you know a, a traditional classroom um, I think it's really important because it does get to be kind of long if you're not um, breaking that up. I found that variety at least the ability to have varied activities during those 90 minutes is helpful. Um, differentiating instruction is important in that it, um, trying to keep the kids on task and interested. I, I bore myself in 90 minutes, why wouldn't I bore them? I would say grouping, movement, and planning. Well, I think the first thing is that you have to have a really good plan. You need to uh, really look at what you want to do, what you want to accomplish, what goals you have in mind for that class period, um, and really go in chunks. Make sure that you have your kids up and moving. Uh, my class kind of lends itself to that way. We're already in partners and small groups. So we just continue that in the classroom. Sometimes I do a game center where it's academic language and verbs and things like that. And we move from center to center, maybe every five to 10 minutes. So we have some movement and that time passes pretty quickly. Differentiation. Um, most times I don't have enough time in a regularly scheduled day. And so with a block period, I can do so much more with differentiation. So for instance, um, I might instruct the whole group for 15 minutes. Then I might get a barometer, whether using a post-it note or some sort of assessment, where are my students on the particular lesson I'm teaching for the day, whether they're high, medium, low, how are they struggling? I'll indicate which ones are the high-level learners, and then the high-level learners will work with the lower or they'll work with the medium. So. In these block periods, it gives me extra time to remediate, to differentiate, to work with students who are struggling. So those small groups might be working and then maybe I'll instruct another group. And so those aren't things you can do in a 45, 48 minute period. I think student-centered, um, getting them engaged, allowing them to have a little bit more control over what we're doing. Um, a lot of the discussion, um, student presentations, I could get them involved. What was kind of neat is um, allowing them to start making up for science. Um, they could start making some of the solutions. So after you taught them enough of the chemistry, you had a little bit extra time where they could actually see from start to finish. Um, and you didn't necessarily have to stop in the middle of the lab anymore. You could just keep going with it um, and go ahead and help with the write writing of the lab write-up. or. Um, I just felt like it was a, a lot better way to teach the labs than in a 45 minute rushed period and then you send them out the door and say good luck. Debates and role plays and um, that type of, um, or document analysis that requires a, a blind document that they have not had a chance to read at home because in AP we, US history we do a lot of reading and um, they have a lot of textbook reading um, that is an, that is an expectation. So in class there's often a lot of document reading, which might, some of the documents would take more time than others. So that's always definitely on the agenda. We always have that we, that we can work on, as well as the different uh, skills. But we break it up. I think one of the biggest things for success with a block schedule is uh, differentiated instruction. So if, if I'm talking about uh, a poem, for example, for 90 minutes, well, I've lost them in the first 15 minutes, right? So the attention span uh, you know, of a, of a high school student, of anybody really, uh, in, in their seat for 90 minutes is rough. So what I've learned is to uh, vary the activities. So we might have a whole group discussion for X amount of uh, minutes, and then for another chunk of the block period, they're in small groups discussing things, and then they are working with peers on this editing activity. So differentiated instruction really helps me keep their focus for an entire 90 minute period. There's definitely more time to get one-on-one -on -one help. I mean, I, I currently am the calculus teacher, but I've taught labs where you've got kids who hate math, who hate being there, and it does help you to connect in a different way with those kids um, that you don't have time for because of you know the schedule, the pacing. Great advantage is the variety of it, and then um, also having a chance to 
be more expressive and a little bit more space involved in it. And it just, you know, I think variety is always good for high school students. It just shakes it up a little bit. I think more time to develop the language. It really takes time to process the language if we're reading or we're listening to a video or listening to audio activities in the classroom. I can take a little bit extra time in that 90 minute period than in that 50 minute class. Not that we're not doing the same type of activities, but I can go further in depth with those questions and question types. Well, it's a perfect day for the labs, obviously. Um, if you're chunking it up in the 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, or 30, 30, 30, there should be some time in there where the kids are working and there can be some one-on-one -on -one time with the students. Field trips, you can do a 90 minute field trip if you're close by or if you're doing a field trip, you're not missing as many subjects on that day that you happen to be taking the field trip. If it's a block day, you might miss a lot in another class, but you're not missing as many classes. You only have to worry about half of your classes for that day. Um, I think they can settle in and really get involved and engaged in the material versus you have 45 minutes and then go, next class. So I think they could actually sit down and calm down a little bit. More one-on-one -on -one feedback, more immediate feedback, I would say, instead of having to wait till the next day. Um, the kids themselves, we do a lot more peer critique or peer workshopping uh, where the kids themselves have more time to discuss things amongst themselves. Uh, I know for the English classroom, uh, a Socratic seminar, for example, works best on a, on a block period, especially if you've got students engaged in a, in a lengthy text. Let's say we've read a novel, and we've read uh, a number of chapters, and there's just a lot to cover. Uh, that's a great opportunity to uh, get students in a circle and talking about uh, the novel. They've got time to elaborate, they've got time to consult the text. For the choir classes, it's been really nice because we can um, go do a performance within that time period. So um, if we want to go to the elementary schools or the middle school, which are pretty close in proximity uh, to us, we can um, leave at the beginning of that period, go perform and be back before the class period's over so the kids don't have to be taken out of other classes to perform. I do a lot of videos. I do some connections with art that I use on our big block days. Um, some of our videos, I can add longer videos. I could have maybe a two minute YouTube clip um, during the class period, a couple of those, you know, or something like that. But in the um, block day, I can have the students read. We have a, a reader that goes along. There's a video that goes along with the reader. So I, can't, I can do all of that at one time instead of chunking it in different days. I make sure that for a 90 minute period, uh, I provide different kinds of activities and getting students out of their seats, I found has been helpful. Even with seniors, uh, getting them out of their seats and moving around, especially on a 90 minute period, uh, is, is helpful in keeping them focused on, on what we're doing. So um, that challenges me to you know, come up with interesting activities and, and things like that, which is, um, which is good for differentiated instruction, make sure I don't get in a rut and those sorts of things. I just look at it as two periods. So I try to plan, now there's a little bit more cohesiveness, which is really nice because there's so much more flow. You're not stopping at a bell and coming back the next day. So if you kind of plan it as two days that could be just hooked side by side, like a nice puzzle piece, and then plan some sort of connecting activity. We all know as teachers, one of the hardest things you ever do is transitions. Figuring out how do I move from this to this and making it cohesive. And so plan it as two days and then figure out a little connecting activity that will make the two work together really well. In a 55 minute period, I try to chunk it up into three parts. So there'd be like say a lecture, uh, some activity, and then a chance to work on some homework. Uh, and for the block periods, you may simply just extend that a little bit more, or if it's definitely a lab, then the whole period is used for that lab. Usually I would start with going over what we did the day before. Um, I would introduce new material if we're doing new material, and again, 15, 20 minutes for each. 15 to 20 minutes is about what a chunk of time would be uh, in terms of going over problems, introducing new material, giving them time to work. A lot of times I'll give them a time limit. You have 20 minutes to work on these 10 problems. Go. 
and then I can walk around and help. And then at the end of 20 minutes, I bring them back together, get them back in their seats, whatever, and then we talk about it again. I try to do multiple things. I try to do, you know, if I'm gonna do a video, I'll try to show it on Black Day. I'm not gonna try and show it on a Monday, Tuesday, or Friday. I'll try and plan it for Black Day. Or guest speakers, we try to plan most of our guest speakers on Black Days, as well as tests and quizzes and those types of things on Black Days as well. We're on the off chance I spend a day lecturing or introducing a unit, maybe showing a, a video or a piece of supplemental material. Um, a, a block day allows me to do three or four different things at one time. Um, the, the students have more time to, to physically look at. It's not, it's not it, what would normally become homework and on the honor system, I really want them to learn that. They spend time with each other right in front of me, bantering or, or dialoguing one-on-one, um, -on -one, which we can deal with right away and not, not have to wait overnight. I don't have to deal with six other classes that they've been worried about that night. I know they're doing my stuff the way I want them to do it during that time frame and I can deal with it right away. I can, re I can uh, dialogue with them. I, I really enjoy it, even though there's a few drawbacks. I would, um, I would not like to go back to just a traditional seven period day. I really like the modified block schedule. Um, I think for a district, uh, the classes that really benefit from those block days, they get those as well as not having the block days. So I think um, everybody sort of shares in that. The drawbacks are when we choose to keep students in a seat for 90 minutes. I know as an adult, when I sit through a staff meeting or a professional development, I can't sit still for 90 minutes. And the expectation on students um, is too much. Should they be engaged in learning when they have to sit for 90 minutes? It's really hard. So um, the drawback is when we choose to expect something of students that we don't expect of ourselves. Um, there's all, other than that, I don't see a drawback. I get more time with my kids. I get more time in the classroom, more time to do activities that I've always wanted to do. I think a lot of it has to do with the outlook. If you can look at this as a chance to do more with your kids, then you're not gonna be as afraid to venture into the unknown.